Okay, cool. So we're recording. And the reason why I wanted to do it today was for the kind of 1111 portal. And I think I said to you, Nicola, that seeing loads of double numbers at the minute, mm. it's been constant, like all the time. Now, normally I think, oh, that's nice, but I, you know, it, I'm not that overly, you know, I don't really get that turned on by it. But the amount of double numbers that I've been seeing, it's it's impossible to ignore. And I just feel like I, I don't know what it what it means. Um, but what I'm feeling about it is that I don't know really, there is this big surge in energy, I guess, and it's how we're directing it personally mm. into our own lives and, and, and what maybe changes or you know, the potential really that's there for us to change in our life. What what are your thoughts about and um what can you tell people about the eleven eleven portal as well? Well, eleven is a power number. It's a master number, along with twenty two and thirty three, and it's seen you know certainly in magic as like highly significant. Of well, a lot of people say it's angelic. A lot of people say that when you keep seeing the number eleven or eleven eleven, that it's about guidance. But it's also for me about choices, because when you get the 11 and the 11, it's a new start. It's the one. The one is inherently powerful, but it's about which way do you go? And I think that a lot of this energy was very much triggered mm. at the Scorpio new moon that we had last week. And actually yeah. they did form um uh, what you call um a finger of god um aspect that was pointing towards Ceres in gemini at the first degree of gemini so that's that 11 11 that's that kind of like right you're standing at the threshold um of big decisions and which how are you going to use this energy how are you going to move forward you know we've just been through this extraordinary year and now we're on the precipice of you know, a, a big year numerologically, which of course is 2022 again. So it's a, you know, a master number year. And it's, it's also about which way is humanity going? There's a, there's, there's a much bigger, it's kind of circles within circles. It's like that Russian doll thing. You take one off and there's something else yeah. inside. Um, and I think there's a lot of very choice decisions that we've all got to make yeah. in the next few months. Yeah, um, if we work out as well with today's date, with the 2021, we, I think that works out from doing the maths in my head, right? It works out to nine. Mm -hmm. So so mm -hmm. nine is just before that next level of change. Nine is a number of manifestation. It's, a, it's, it's one of the most powerful um, prime numbers because it's, it's the three times three. So this is, you know, whenever you see that, that, that nine configuration, certainly in astrology, you know, it, it is about, right, where are we aiming for? What can we bring to the table? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it feels like a very powerful portal in a lot of ways. I mean, it's, it's also got that slight kind of retrospective feel today, obviously, because it's the day of remembrance. Mm -hmm. um, but it's about you know, not repeating mistakes as well, um, definitely. Yeah, yeah, so so the nine, like, what that kind of brings up for me, yeah, you're right, with the, uh, the, with the three, like, the, the trinity, uh, but it also kind of says to me, this is the end of a cycle, so if we take today as maybe a manifestation portal mm -hmm. to be an end of a cycle, what would, what would you choose in your own lives to consciously end to then birth the new and it could be relationships it could be um the way you perceive yourself the the, the way you the, the the potential that you kind of hold back you know all of those are can be things that are are cyclical through patterns of behavior so if we were to think about the things that don't serve us by really tuning into the thing we want the most if there's something that holds you back, bring conscious intention to, you know, even if it's just a, a little ritual that you do, it can take five minutes, it can take five hours 
but it's it's the ritual and it's the embodiment of the energy that you bring in that that brings that manifestation around so it's no kind of magic you know finger that comes down and says you're the chosen one i'm going to change this for you child you change it yourselves through your intention where you direct your energy where you direct that creative force energy brings in that creative manifestation of the thing that you're thinking about the most so if you've been thinking about the the shit you're in and the negative cycles that's that's the way that you've been creating that so if you want to bring something new in what is it that you won't get clear on that and think about the change and start to to align your thoughts with that so you can create it it can be so simple i experience i'm just speaking from my own experience i'm not saying it's simple that everybody should can do it but they can do it it's literally you switch off that switch and you switch on the new switch it's literally like right had enough of that now this is what's happening from now on in and there's no other possible way back that's the only way forward so that's one of the ways where you can quickly manifest something is if you truly believe it and step straight into it so we've got a few people that have said hi hi uh indy and, and joe and paula so if you've got any comments or you want us to look at i mean even just share how how you guys are feeling at the moment is there anything that you want to change are you noticing any changes how are the energies affecting you because we're going to talk about what astrologically is going on for us and maybe how we can use this energy so let's see if we can get back into that okay all right so right i can make this bigger can't i somehow move that okay i'm being clever now Okay, so this is the chart at the moment. So Nicola, you are an expert in astrology. Talk us through what's going on. Oh, gosh, so much. I mean, you know, just to kind of reflect on what you were just saying about manifestation and the fact this is an 1111 portal and the, the energy of this week, the energy of now is very much about making decisions, but it's not quite the time to take action because there is so much that's closing down right now. You know, it's the end of a, a, a year. I mean, who can believe that we're, you know, we're halfway yeah. through November already. I mean, it's crazy. So, okay, so what's going on? So this is the chart of right now, right this minute. And um, the big news really is today we have this meetup between, um, is it quite perfected? Yes, it, well, it just about is between Mercury and Mars. So Mercury communication, Mars is action. It's how we take action. Now, these two together can be very volatile, very volatile, especially as they're opposing electrical planet Uranus, okay. but squaring Saturn. So there's a lot around this configuration, this big what we call a T-square this red kind of triangle here, in fact, there's several of them, there's ones mm. involving the sun as well, um, around some, for some, it will be not being able to voice what they want. You know, when Mercury, your planet of communication squares Saturn, sometimes it limits what we can say or limits what we can think, and it's gonna cause frustration. So what we're looking at on a wider scale, especially with that opposition to Uranus, is the things that are being communicated at the moment are going to cause a lot of anger and a lot of tension. And this can be anything from maybe your boss at work or somebody who sees themselves in a position of authority um, to governmental diktats. And I think that this is a lot about that. Um, and this can overspill into a lot of anger. So it kind of suggests to me that around the mid month, because this influence will be around for about five days or so, okay. we're going to see a lot of anger expressed around people who are trying to break free from some kind of restriction or some kind of diktat. 
So, you know, have a look where this is happening in your personal life, if it is at all. I mean, what you may find today and tomorrow is that you may get into angry exchanges with people or you may hear angry exchanges or you may, I mean, you know, if you go onto Twitter or something, it's full of angry exchanges, but people will really be sounding off. There's a lot of frustration brewing. So that's one um, aspect at the moment. The other is this really nice, um, trine between the sun and Neptune, Neptune in Pisces, mm. which doesn't, it perfects tomorrow. That means they're in, a, in what we call an exact trine at the same degree tomorrow. Really good for creativity. So we've got yeah. this harsh aspect of the Saturn aspect, but this one is a nice one. Mm -hmm. It's good for dreams. It's good for creativity. It's good for just being able to lose yourself in a little bit of a dreamscape um a really nice kind of energy coming in there and the third biggie at the moment is the fact that venus there she is there little venus sign um having just moved into capricorn is beginning to make aspects both to mars in a nice way yeah. so there's a lot of energy at the moment about relationships now venus just to um just to kind of summarize venus in capricorn Capricorn is all about um, quality. Capricorn is all about what we value. So married with Venus, this is, a, we're going to be spent, and Venus is in Capricorn for a very long time. She's here till early March. She's going to retrograde here. So she goes forward and then backwards. We're going to be looking a lot at our relationships primarily. Yep. Um, we're going to be asking for commitment from people over the next couple of months. And if they can't bring you that commitment, we're going to see a lot of um, breakups because people, you know, Venus and Capricorn is, I really value myself. Mm. And so this is, you know, do you value me? Mm. Um, but it's also a time as well where we um, can invest in things of quality. You know, Venus is all about nice things as well and what where we spend our money. And it has to be good. It has to last. It has to be of quality. Um, no shoddiness, no shoddy Christmas presents this year. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a few surprises. She's making a, a try into Uranus. So there's going to be a few surprises coming up around relationships. There's conversations that will have to be had around relationships moving forward, most definitely. Um, and making sure that whoever you're with is on the same page as you. Um, there's going to be an increase in intimacy as well. You know, there's a lot of planets piled up in Scorpio. So, yeah, those are the main trends. But we're entering, you know, this is still, this week is okay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of calm. Next week is not. And then, we, you know, we're getting into a really turbulent part of the year. And we're getting into what we call the eclipse window next week. Next week, yeah. So the 19th, isn't it? Yeah, the 19th, we've got yeah. that full moon in Scorpio. Uh, sorry, full moon in Taurus, um, you know, which is a, a partial lunar eclipse. Yeah. So that's a biggie. But the real biggie is the one in Sagittarius on the 4th of December, which is a new moon solar, partial solar eclipse. Okay. So we're already in the eclipse. Next week we'll be in what we call the eclipse window. Oh. So the themes of the eclipses will start coming up for you from next week. And they're um, going to be in. Is it? Is it still Gemini and Sag or? No, the, no. This 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 eclipse is in the first one on the nineteenth is in Taurus. Okay. So we've got to, So this is about value again. This is about finances. This is about money. Is that um, right on the Uranus transit or? Um, no, it, I think it's at right at the end of Taurus. I think it's about 27 degrees of Taurus. So, um, you know, there's going to be a lot there about what we need to let go of because it's right at the end of the sign and what we need to concentrate on and what we need to bring in. And then the next um, eclipse on the 4th of December is um, in Sagittarius. And so the thing is, the what we call the nodes are about to move into Taurus Scorpio. So they've been in Gemini Sagi. This is the last eclipse 
along that Saggi Gemini axis, they're moving into Taurus and Scorpio. So we've got 18 months now of focus on money, value, mm. how we earn, what security means to us. You know, so it's it's quite a tumultuous time. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff coming up. The eclipses, do they always happen on the node on the node? So yes. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. It's when the sun gets within 15 minutes of the nodes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. So those nodes of fate really are gonna are gonna move then into Taurus, who's already kind of been having these major changes because of Uranus being in there for the last I don't know, couple of years, isn't it? Yeah, well, no, it's been a little bit longer than that. It's about it's about three years or so because Uranus moved into Taurus, then dipped out, and then went back in again. Right. But yeah. but yeah, I mean, these are the big stories which are kind of building up for twenty twenty two. Yeah, um, there's a lot of activity in Taurus next year, so there's a lot of activity around finances, personal finances, personal security, the financial markets. Um, yeah um and the other big story that i'm kind of researching at the moment is the movement of uh, jupiter into pisces which i think happens because of jupiter's retrograde i don't think that happens till march okay. but then when he does move into pisces he's pretty kind of rapid in yeah. forward movement and then um you know we've got next year we've got this big jupiter meeting up with neptune um yeah neptune rules the seas mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's very strong because he, he's in his rulership of pisces um jupiter expands there's going to be a lot of flooding next year a mm -hmm. lot of flooding when those two meet which i think they do in april going into may yeah i think it's exact on may the 18th so it's like the highest potential because i always like to look at the highest potential of, of the planets really um just to see like how what possibilities can lie for us so neptune in pisces is such a an etheric but you know connection isn't it it's like opening up that kind of crown chakra and really connecting uh maybe not being grounded at all but really kind of ascension level stuff neptune in pisces um and then the jupiter kind of coming in like you say expanded so it's 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 kind of like the world and internally, I feel we are going to be juxtapositioned as much as the world that we know it starts to crumble with, you know, the, the Capricorn and the Saturn and all that stuff, or, you know, really wanting the world to change and people being affected by that seriously and wanting to cling on, understandably. Um, and even more forces and power and control, they they potentially want to cling on to old systems as well. So all of that really does bring in that kind of Saturnian uh, feeling of, of, of law, order, constriction, constraints. With that will come potential, you know, revolt in some way, shape or form. But then we've also got this other side. So that's like the external world, but it's also almost like the internal world can also be really spiritual so the deep inner work the potential for the deep inner work it will probably happen whether you want it or not but it's how you perceive it whether you call it spiritual or you call it something that you don't really like at all but i think a lot of people will have a choice they might accept it or fight it but it's really about um, evolving their, their spiritual self. I feel this is going to be really big for personal ascension. And people go kicking and screaming. Some really do want to stay where they are and blank it off. But, um, you know, we're here to evolve and grow. That's naturally what they say the soul wants to do. So in a way, we've never been given a greater potential because of the external experience to do that and obviously these planets are going to massively help whether it works out how it works out i don't know but i can definitely see the potential for that happening what do you think i agree but i also think that this um neptune in pisces transit which is a very long transit 
um, is also about spiritual crises. Yeah. Because I, you know, I do think that the way that the world was going, the way that the world has been going for, you know, thousands of years, it's kind of reaching that point. It comes back to this whole 11, 11 thing, Sarah's on the, the first degree of uh, Gemini, you know, the choices that we make during this time are so key as to whether we get Neptune in Pisces good or Neptune in Pisces not so good. And we will all, as you say, experience different journeys depending on where we're at, our levels of awareness, consciousness, the actions that we take, you know, whether we've done the inner work or not. Yeah. Um, and it is this, you know, this opportunity to reform um, but there's going to, there are some, we are building up, I mean, looking at 2022, looking at next year, and I know this talk isn't about 2022 particularly, but this is kind of setting the scene that everything that's happening this side of Christmas is setting the scene for next year. Yeah. And I do think that it, next year has a lot there that's optimistic but we're still going to be battling a lot of the same circumstances next year that we've experienced since the beginning oh, yeah. of 2020. It's not just going to go away yeah. overnight. And now I do think um, there's going to be a lot of very intense, adverse weather events next year. Mm. Now, we see them as adverse but in the, you know, in the, in the multiverse, in the universe, are, are they seen as that or are they seen as opportunities for spiritual growth and for making the right choices? Because when we're comfortable, we don't necessarily always make the right choices for our development. We just stay in comfort. Well, yeah, I mean, very rarely do we want to make a choice that moves us out of our comfort zone because we fear what's on the other side. But I really like the word that you used, reform um an absolute spiritual crisis so for those who you know haven't dared to go within before normally are faced with a spiritual crisis because that opening and awareness and the research and stuff you get into after having that um opens up another world to you and that doesn't happen overnight either uh, and i know someone personally who's totally going through what I would call a spiritual crisis, who now has the opportunity to massively reinvent themselves. But boy, have they got some work to do um, and their life's been turned upside down. And that's sometimes how it happens. But it, when that does happen to you, and you do fight to get to the other side and the other side, is something that you've consciously created. So, you know, it's hard to remember that we consciously create our lives all the time. It doesn't just happen to us. We have a force that we can direct our energy into manifesting the, the life that we have. So all the time, our choices are creating the next step, the next step, the next step. So I do feel like people are going to be faced with that head on. Like the choices that you've made have got you here today. Do you like it? Do you want to carry on? If not, guess what? Now you've got to climb this fucking mountain over here with just a, a tin of beans in your backpack. Do you want to do it? I mean, I always say that we co-create because I always used to be completely like, we, you know, we create, you know, uh, what we see outside is just a reflection of what's going on within but I, the more you watch astrological trends, but then it's horse, cart, chicken, egg thing, um, the more you realize that there are forces that are outside of our personal control, but it's how we react to them and how we view them that's the important thing. So I just, yeah, I just, you know, that's, I think that's the kind of like the, the beauty and the danger of astrology is that you can say, oh, this is likely to happen, that's likely to happen, but human nature always goes for the negative, or quite often hears the negative, because it's it yeah. triggers, sometimes when we hear things like, there's likely to be huge floods in April of May of next year, it creates fear, yeah, uh, and a fear response, and we remember fear sometimes more than we do kind of the joyous times, yeah, and I, you know, because it's such a strong 
emotion. Yeah. But then we need to reframe it and and you know and try and transcend the fear that things like that are you know may cause. I mean, it may, it may be possible, and I'm very open to this, that some people on the planet won't experience floods, you know, because they're just in a, in a different kind of universe. They're, different, they're on a different parallel line, but I think the vast majority of us are likely to. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of kind of adversity around. But anyway, dragging it back to yeah. um, this year, we've still got, I would say that mid-November, um, going into December, the last week of... When the sun moves into Saggi um, in late November, it's, it, it kind of lightens up a lot um, briefly, but then December is a pretty heavy kind of aspect as well because we're building up to what we call a Uranus-Saturn square, the third and final Uranus-Saturn square. Yeah. Uranus is all about freedom, revolution, um, you know, individuation. And then we've got Saturn, which is about, no, we do it this way, you do it my way. And so freedom versus authority, and that uh, perfects on Christmas Eve. On yeah, that, that, December. that square that you warned me about um, really fucked me up, by the way. <laughs> 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 it fucked me up since it started. Um, so is it likely to fuck me up again, or is this third and final? I mean, obviously you learn from everything. So what an amazing lesson for me to learn. Do not fucking rest on your laurels, girl, um, mm. because the rug can be pulled any time. So don't get cocky because this shit can, you know, <laughs> your ship can go down. So, you know, it taught me that massive lesson. So I'm so grateful for it. But like this third pass, I mean, you know, we've had two already. The first one, <laughs> broken continued with the second one so what's this third one going to be all about well when you get what you call a closing square and this is a, a closing square of saturn and uranus it's kind of saying have you learned the lessons <laughs> yes <laughs> have you learned the lessons have you done the work but remember these are two outer planets it depends whether they're hitting your personal planets right as to whether you know those lessons are going to be more um, succinct more intense um but generally we're looking at a big planetary thing going on here and this is kind of setting the scene for 2022 there's a lot of information with all this um planetary stuff going on at the moment especially with mercury there and mars in scorpio there's a lot of big reveals there's a bigger one to come i think because they're feeding energy there um, into pluto and i just feel that i mean the stuff that's coming out on a daily basis i mean if this had happened like two years ago it'd be like every day would be enormous mm -hmm. but at the moment it's just like oh here's another thing here's another scandal here's another um government kind of you know thing about you know standards and ethics and all, all the rest of it um but i do feel that there's something bubbling away underneath that's going to be quite substantial that's going to come out in the next couple of weeks or so and this is what feeds into that uranus saturn thing mm. because people have just had a gut full and they're just going do you know this is wrong. We need some kind of, like you say, reform. We mm. need to change the status quo. We can't go on like this. The messages, I mean, this could be just because I'm feeling the Mercury and Mars, but the messages that we receive from external sources need to fucking change. The only way, you know, whether this is suppression or it's control, I don't know, but we either stop listening to the outside messages and switch on our internal messages and broadcast that because everything is energy and we, we put out our own frequency and we take in mm. the messages and that changes our frequency. If we were to be bombarded with positive messages, then the negative stuff wouldn't feel as challenging and the fear, but it wouldn't trigger fear so much. Everybody raised the vibration with the help of external forces being the you know media then our our world would be completely different imagine if 
for the next month, the media promised to only promote happy things, positive things, you know, and showed that reflection of the world. People's minds, it wouldn't take too long for people's minds to change. They would change the perspective. That's how media works. It controls your brain and how you think the world is and how you treat your fellow man. Because ever since this fear-mongering started, rightly or wrongly, fear-mongering, I'm not judging it at all, but people have turned on each other because they've been angry and fearful. And I remember when this first kicked off, just normal-looking people in the eye became a weird thing to do because everybody was like, oh, you know, you've got to stay in and you you walk that way, uh, you know, um, keep... It's all weird and that human connection. And that was based on the messages we we were receiving and mm -hmm. how they have been allowed to penetrate the mind of, of, of the collective conscious. So every every message that you allow into your system creates something. It does something to you. The messages that we receive needs to change. It needs to be different. It's not fair on society. It's not fair on what it does to people's mental health. That's just not right. It's not, but I mean, with these kind of setups planetarily, I think that the, the true acid test, the true spiritual test that's going on at the moment is very much about how we are responding to these conditions. So it's almost like necessarily we're going through this Saturnian phase and by God, it's not over. I mean, Saturn and Uranus, because they're so slow moving, they're pretty much in, or oh, it'll be a separating square, but they're pretty much in square for the first half of next year as well. So it's, it's more about, yes, there is this imposition. There has always been this imposition. It's just that we haven't been as aware of it as we are now. And, I think that this phase that we're moving through, this transition is, it is a test of mind, body and spirit because it's a test of how well we, you know, if we've done the work, as you say, if we've got the resources internally to actually cope with what's going on now. And I think a lot of the fact that people are just going along with, one prime message and not uh, questioning any kind of narratives that are coming out from top down is a lot to do with the fact that they're so disconnected from their own self, their higher self, their own spirituality, their own inner voices, their own intuition. It's a rite of passage. And I actually feel that there's going to be a bigger bifurcation next year, that people are going to kind of some people are going to kind of harden into their position. Um, so it's going to be, it's, I think next year is going to be really interesting. Yeah, really interesting. feeling I get is um, spiritual businesses are really going to take off. I mean, you're going to see them kind of popping up here, there and everywhere, um, you know, which is great. And the, the reason I, I think that is because now we'll soon see if there's an agenda because, you um, spiritual businesses will have to come under more scrutiny you know would come under more scrutiny uh for what they do it's quite free in the uk um you know whether that remains the same uh would be interesting to see because i really do think spiritual businesses are going to take off and be massive because the nhs is on its knees you know the resources aren't there anymore so people are going to find look for alternative ways and if people do their research where energy is concerned this is no way advocating if you've got a broken leg or you need a heart bypass or you've you know you've got um anything serious you go and you go and get medical advice but energy you know energy medicine is a big thing and especially in other countries where they've managed to research it research energy medicine that the disease and illness disturbance dis-ease doesn't start in here it starts out here in your free in your field you know so so i think things like that complementary medicines um, meditation all of that which calms the nervous system which affects your, your physical well-being 
it's going to be biz, big business, especially because people are ill, you know, with what they call long COVID. People are looking at ways to support themselves. The NHS just cannot provide that right now. So I have a feeling, and maybe it's that Neptune and Pisces as well, that really will kind of bring complementary holistic medicine to the forefront even more. Hopefully, or, you know, we're allowed that way and the, the kind of government don't get involved and say, right, okay, we need to put like restrictions on this, but we'll see what happens. So we've got Lindsay Knight saying, uh, she already had an angry re reaction to someone last weekend, I regret. I thought it was maybe Mars and Scorpio. She has that placement in her chart. Mm. Yeah, I've, you know, I noticed it myself being impatient and um, um, you know, and that's to kind of like let people know that this is this, you know, this is an influence that could be happening to everybody. So, you know, it's easy to get kind of pulled into it because, you know, we can. But if you've got that awareness and somebody comes at you or you're more likely to go at someone else, you can maybe just bring that awareness in and say, OK, I know what's happening here and separate yourself because sometimes things uh, can't be undone. You've got to be careful, though, as well. I mean, you, you know, astrology works. It's very cyclical. So we look at what's happened in the past and we use it to kind of inform the present. Um, you know, Mars um, opposes uh, Uranus. I don't know when that's exact. I'm just looking. I think it's exact um, on around about the 14th. Um, Mars opposite Uranus accidents. Accidents. So, you know, just take extra care over the next few days when driving or if you're operating machinery in any way, shape or form or like me, don't take a tumble down the stairs, um, you know, because it's that's what it tends to do. Mars tends to be very destructive, especially when it's getting energy from Uranus more so. Yeah. So just we'll we'll round up in a sec, but just looking at those energies again. So right now, today, because the sun will move quickly, we've got the sun trying in Pluto, which is amazing for power and transformation. And then that also trines Neptune, which is maybe that higher, higher self, let's just say. Um, we've got the it's interesting that uh, Venus trine Uranus. And then it's also trying in Mars. So the Mars and the Venus relationships, the male and the female. Um, but I also think it's that internal energy as well. Like you say, that value in yourself. Yeah, ab you know? absolutely. Yeah. Venus is trining Uranus, is sextiling Mars, Mercury. Uh, a sextile is a bit of a lesser aspect. So it's not as influential as that trine. Um, but yeah, I mean, it means that, um, you know, the yin, the yang, the male, the female, is more harmonious at the moment, but conversations still need to be had. You'll see, you'll see a lot more growing um, people. You know, people, it's a, it's a real make or break influence, this. People need to show, they need to know their partner values them. Yes. I like and, and, and wants them and wants and sees, a, you know, because what's Capricorn? Capricorn is time. So you want things of value. You want things that are gonna last. You want commitment. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've noticed that myself with that Venus in Capricorn, because obviously I'm in Capricorn, um, you know, Capricorn can rule work as well and how you're seen in the world. But um, I've definitely started to feel more, you know, I can kind of have issues around self-worth and all oh, crazy, you know, is my course worth that much? But now I've like, you know, things have changed where I think about that. And, um, I, you know, 100% feel into the value of it now, whereas maybe even a couple of months ago, I was like, oh, is this too much? But I'm like, no, because, you know, and I have evidence of it. This is not just I'm making it up, but I've kind of stepped more and more into the, the self-worth behind it. So I'm definitely noticing that in myself. And for Capricorns, of course, having Venus in your sign, especially for, so I mean, she normally spends, mm. you know, a few weeks in the sign and now she's there till early March. Yeah. So great for finances. Great. 
Let's see if anybody wants a, a quick reading from us. So if you're still with us, there's a few people on, but if you do want us to do a little reading for you, just type yes um, and we will we will do that for you now. Okay, so Lindsay says, yeah, <laughs> they're all like throwing yeses out. I didn't realize there was that many on. Okay, so, right, Lindsay, so you're gonna have to keep typing yes. I'm gonna stop that share. Okay, so Lindsay Knight. Okay, so when I when I just did what I did, um, for me, like it seems like Lindsay, you've got you know you've got a lot of good stuff going on there. Uh, I can you, you look like you're in flow to me. What do you think, Nicola? What did you get anything that? Um, well, I will just say this, and like sometimes I'm right with names, sometimes I'm wrong, and you know I'm, it might be picking up on the energy of someone else anyway, but. Lindsay got the name Robert. I don't know whether that means anything to you. Um, as soon as um, Anne Marie mentioned your name, I got the world card as a first card, which is Saturn. I've so Saturn. the world card is endings and beginnings, and it's next to the Queen of Pentacles. So this is about some kind of financial um, issue, financial security issue. Um, and then the Hermit, which needs reflecting on. So there's there's something. Um, you know that's what I'm picking up it's strongly a financial issue um, but you need to kind of use this quieter week to go in and really think about where it is that you want to make those changes I mean you know certainly we're going into as I say this eclipse window Lindsay and it's all about money in a lot of ways because the first one's in Taurus which is all about money and then you know so we've got it. We've still got a few weeks uh, yet or a couple of weeks before, you know, something really kind of momentous happens. But it's the solar eclipse, which is in a very mutable, changeable sign on the 4th of December, where we're going to start seeing real changes. So that's that's the impression that I'm getting. There's something financial that needs resolution. She just said um, that's her great uncle's name, Robert. He passed this year. Right. OK. Yeah, so I get Saturn with Leo and the number three, and I also got the four of pentacles as well. So it's definitely money related. And maybe, you know, you're shoring up a bit of money at the minute. But I feel like your energy alignment is great. Uh, and there's just something maybe about this, this creative side of you, this new thing that you want to get started or this thing that you want to do. It can either mean that there's really like you, you've got it nailed, you've got the structure in place, there's, there's longevity to it, or that's just something that you need to potentially look at. Are you spending too much money on it? You know, as uh, Nicola says, think about the finances behind the thing that you want to do or, or going forward. So I hope that helps. Lindsay, I was also getting the name Jenny yelled at me. I don't know whether that's um, connected to you as well. <laughs> Okay, so let's do Joe. So all those people that originally said, yeah, you've gone off my screen now, so you just need to keep typing, yeah. So Joe Crowell. So Joe, I hope you're well. Let's just see where Joe is up to. Hmm. 
So I feel initially when I tuned into you, I thought, okay, there's a lot going on. Have you somehow got a little bit overwhelmed? Is a little bit self doubt creeped in? So that was my first initial thing. But then I'm wondering if energy alignment is just slightly off at the minute, but the crown chakra is open. And I've got the Empress and the Star. So, I mean, they're, they're either healing cards, something needs to happen or is happening. And you've got Uranus, Leo and Five. So it could be something around the heart, a relationship, something you love has, you know, changed, changed for the better um, or just some kind of change that's come in. I'll tune into it a bit more if I can. But what have you got, Nicola? the king of swords the death card and the seven of pentacles now the death card is not well sometimes it's literal death but it's not here um so again the king of uh, swords is ideas thoughts um illumination the death card is deep transitional plutonian change and the seven of pentacles is about planting new new seeds that are going to um come in so you know this is very linked into that neptune sun aspect that perfects tomorrow although the influence we can feel now will be able to feel it the rest of the week um and it's very much about using something is closing down that's the death card so, or, or transitioning or changing metamorphosing but you need to use your creativity to bring in something new yeah it's creativity that's it it's creativity the fire the leo and the uranus creativity yeah. now, you could be getting absolute bursts of inspiration here mm. but is how is that affecting you um your energy your well-being your groundedness uh, your body you know and that's just something that i'm wondering um or maybe there's a healing stuff that needs to happen for you personally i don't know uh, the so thing is about uranus oppositions is they give us lots of creative ideas but some of them are, are literally crazy and they can be too much. And then if we focus on them for too long, like how can I do, oh my God, I'm speaking from experience, but you know, they can burn us out mentally. Okay, so Paula Madden. So you've got Pisces, the nine, so very much in line with what we talked about at the beginning. You've got Leo, um, which can be matters of the heart, your confidence, your self-esteem. Um, and the chakras that I think we need to focus on are the root and the third eye. And when I tune into you, it's like, there's a lot of will going on in your mind. Like you kind of know what you want. So you're willing it um, a lot, uh, but there's just, there's just a some level of disbelief I feel on your part that it's possible for you so as Nicola and I were talking today about that reform that's what I feel that you're willing for yourself that letting go of cycles and I know we talked about this on our coaching session uh, last week but this is what I feel that you're really conscious of now you're willing the newness into your mind and you've just got to allow it to to that belief just to resonate all over your body uh, in all the cells so I hope that makes sense what did you get Nicola yeah I mean I don't often get reversals in tarot but I got the um, three of pentacles reversed so the three you know the three the right way up is kind of like the creative force of the universe it's the you know the the holy triad you know and when it's reversed something's been blocked and you can't manifest it you're not bringing it down to earth properly um now i've got that followed by the ten of cups and the two of pentacles so the ten of cups is about emotional happiness and security and things so whatever this is even if it's a work-related issue it feeds into emotional happiness you know your welfare your security and again the two of pentacles the two is very much the theme of today you know that 11 energy the split 
it's which way do I go? And one energy feels really dense, which is here. And the other energy up here is kind of like the higher path. Mm. And so there's something that just needs unplugging. Yeah. And that's how it feels in order to be able to kind of, you know, the thing is take the road less traveled. This is, this is not a time to hang on to things which have not served you well. I know that's such a cliche, but it's, it's never been more true. Um, and you'll see this um, manifesting anyway over the next few weeks. That eclipse on the 4th of December is actually on what we call the South Node. Mm -hmm. um, so what you're going to find is, is that things are going to start kind of moving into position to kind of leave anyway. It's going to be very evident, very obvious. But it, something needs to go to free the, free the path. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Nicola. Um, jo says she's awash with ideas at the moment and changes in the business, but she's had a virus, so it's taken its toll. Yeah, because all your chakras were, were kind of face down. Mm -hmm. um, reached out yesterday to book a healing. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thanks for that feedback. Um, Natasha. Oh, Natasha. Okay. I get a lot about relationships here, where the heart is, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, the root chakra and the crown chakra are the ones that are kind of calling out to me right now. And I know your situation, so, you know, it could be where, you know, heart, what's that saying? Home is where the heart is, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But there might be... Um, you might be thinking about that. You might, you know, it might be a question that's on your mind at the minute. I've got you working hard at something right now, which is the Eight of Pentacles. Something that, you know, you're, you're striving towards. What about you, Nicola? Um, yeah, totally emotional cards. The first card I got was the Queen of Swords. And I'll explain that energy in a minute. Followed by the Moon. OK, followed by the Ace of Cups. Now, the, the Queen of Swords, especially next to the moon, because the moon is how we give and receive emotion. And she's a bit of a cold fish. So I'm not saying that you're a cold fish, but there's a situation, an emotional situation that you've locked up part of your heart around. And, uh, you know, in doing so, and you may have even cut yourself off from people. This is how it feels, you know, with that, with that moon there. It's causing psychological issues, mm. you know, because when you get the moon and you can see her plunging into the water, what we don't kind of face and integrate into ourselves, it then becomes magnified in some other kind of circumstance. So there's something emotional that needs sorting out. And when you do, you get the Ace of Cups. Mm -hmm. You get a new emotional start, a new emotional beginning, and a, re a reconnection to that heart energy. Mm -hmm. Now, this is these cards are really salient for the next few weeks because, as I say, from, um, is it December the 20th, what is it, the 18th, Venus Retrograde? Uh, I can't remember. Um, the Venus retrograde period, which is at the end of December. Let me just check the exact date because it's really important. Um, so, sorry, yeah, it's the 19th, not the 18th, sorry. So from the 19th, um, Venus is going to make us look at all our close connections and mainly romantic, but it can be family stuff as well. Yeah, and uh, it's almost like what's coming to me um, is really to focus on what, what it is that you want on a heart level, not just um, the, the, the stuff that we think we need or the stuff that we think we want, because logically that looks like it's going to make us happy. For instance, somebody could um, think that, uh, you know, 
having uh, this job because it's you know 100k a year salary that kind of thing is going to be the thing that really you know on paper my god who would turn it down but if we really sat with our thoughts on it and really tuned into what um what we really wanted then that might look like not having that 100k job and actually let's say working with animals that kind of thing do you know what I mean so it's like that head and the heart so that's what we've got for you love. I hope it makes sense okay so Selena and Mm. Mm. but you go first on this one while I figure this out but I've got a feeling it's like relationship stuff um I don't know whether it's relationships but there's definitely with the five of wands a battle going on mm. you know I've I've got that you know the five of wands is always a it's a, in, a inverse pentagram there's a pentagram being pulled apart so pentagram is actually a healing symbol but this is something which has been you know um torn apart and then I've, it's followed by the ten of wands now the ten of wands is always about you know tens are always completion the completion and new beginning numbers so in this card we've got somebody kind of you know going down the hill she's gone up the hill to the 10 and then she's she's down again and then the chariot is about balancing your emotions before you can move forward yeah. um, a very cancerian card so there's there's something that feels very current very now very in the middle of some kind of emotional um turmoil yeah. Um, uh, you know, and that needs to be balanced before you can make proper decisions. Yeah, I've got any momentum uh, yet. Yeah, the, the root chakra, the sacral and the throat. So it could be, um, you know, it's just something you're not saying or something that you really want to say. Um, you've got Scorpio, the sun and the number one. So all kind of happening now. Uh, with with what's going on so the sun in Scorpio I mean it really likes to be deep it likes to be passionate it could be that you've entered into something new and you've been thrown into a complete tailspin about w what this is where this is going what do they think about you how is it going to work out for you it could be a, something as simple as that but I think it's something that is happening now there's a new it's it's very current for you um and I think like it's, um, you know, when I tune in, it's almost like you can think quite logically, but actually your body's telling you something different about it. Um, so it's like, it's, it's like a bit of a disconnection between the head and what the body's responses is. It's a bit like, and I've got this, like, you know, you look like a, a duck, you know, a graceful swan, let's say, not a duck, a graceful swan you know, and calm, cool, collected, yeah, but underneath you're like, fuck, shit, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very much my energy, because I never um, know Some on. Scorpio as well, you know, Scorpio is what you call a fixed sign, and, and quite often it's very indicative of deep emotions that you're not moving on from. Yeah, you can't quite even understand the depth of your own emotions sometimes mm. with that Scorpio in sun, especially if you don't have it natally and then wham, you've got it as a transit. Uh, you know, that could definitely be emotional yeah. overload. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Laura Armitage. So when I tune into your Laura, I got I got somebody who looks very sleek, cool, calm, collected, kind of sails through life quite, you know, elegantly. 
but actually what I feel from that energy is that you don't really make decisions as quickly as you could or should. So it's almost like you have fear of making the wrong decision, fear of making a mistake. So you kind of stay a little bit detached from things. Uh, I've got Leo, Mars and the number two. So there might be choices to make. Uh, And, you know, I would say how quickly, how well are you making your choices? Because you could be missing out on potentials. What do you think, Nicola? Well, I think this is financial. I think, I don't know what's going on, but it's kind of, you know, I've got the Empress there, which is Venus. You know, it's a, it's a Venus archetype, um, followed by the six of pentacles. Six is Venus's number. So definitely Venus, Venus energy, you know, it could be um, ostensibly relationships, but it's not ace of pentacles. There's something around a financial opportunity. Um, I think money is possibly in a bit of a flux at the moment, but um, there's something coming in with the, that ace of pentacles. It's going to be OK. So if that resonates, then, you know, take it if it doesn't, you know, but there's, there's a new opportunity. Yeah, definitely. And just see how, you know, again, there's the throat chakra. Um, does, uh, you know, how well you're in alignment with the, the authentic, authenticity about what it is you truly want. I just feel there's a hold of withholding for some reason for you. There's potentially a fear around really coming out and, you know, owning who you want to be. Um, so if there's ever ever a time to do that, it would be now. So Selena says, thank you, career change and standing fair for what I believe in deep ancestral healing the past 12 months. It's a great reminder to check balance and, and align before moving forward. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. Anyone else before we shoot off? No, I don't think so. Laura says, thank you so much, ladies. All right, so shall we shall we just do a collective reading for the, what should we do it for? Being in Capricorn or not? Something else, Eclipse, or should we wait and do that another time? Well, let's, let's look at the energies of um, the next six weeks. No, let's do a reading for what this 11-11 is. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've come round in a full circle, haven't we? Yeah. Sorry if that's no reason. So I get the root and the third eye chakra so that really is the manifest you know one of the manifestation portals really the third eye the crown and the root so if, if we think of it in terms of um the magician uh even when we think of um that carbalistic tree you know we're, we're bringing in that that spiritual essence that's us and then what is it we're creating through malkus you know mm -hmm. the root chakra is it malkus in a Mm -hmm. cool. so mm -hmm. the third eye is the vision uh, for what we want the root chakra is where we can you know manifest Saturn even it's you know what's materialistic in our life our reality um so really taking the opportunity because it's quite poignant of what we've talked about taking the opportunity today if not for the next few days to really visualize what it is that you want, write it down on a piece of paper and find something that symbolizes the person that you want to become and the life that you want to live. So we've got Leo, it's all about the heart. We've got Pisces uh, and we've got the number nine as well. So the nine is the energy portal that we're in today. Pisces, what can we say about that? How does this relate to what I'm getting? So Pisces, We've got that Neptune and Pisces, haven't we? So again, energy in actually, and that can really be the crown chakra for me. Mm. 
that's what it means to me so we've got this opportunity now for this the spiritual downloads the spiritual you know invitation if you like whatever you believe in god creator just electric energy whatever it is it works with you so like as you say nicola co-creating so set your intention to Mm -hmm. co-create with that energy to work for you in the best possible way that you can because you have the potential to, to do it now what about you lovely yeah i've got the seven of pentacles again which already came out and you know so very much about planting those seeds quite literally i mean the seven of pentacles has that neptune influence seven is neptune's number so it's about dreaming dreaming what you want and then you you're going to be able to move forward and take action on it page of um uh wands very very quickly page of wands is a, a an energy coming in a, a, a real kind of motivation coming in but and this is you know um i never kind of pull cards and put them back again i always give them the ten of swords feels like within this it's almost like it's driven by disappointment mm. that something has disappointed you um or will disappoint you and you've got to be honest about that you know if we're talking about a relationship or a job what elements of it are not working what's let you down you know is it friendships have they let you down um are they just not delivering for you emotionally you've got to face that over you know because 10 is a, a closing card over the next few so i pulled a final card because i don't want to end on the 10 of swords because it's just been in like oh you know which is the star so oh. the star is your hopes dreams and wishes it's a very much um, in astrology we look at the 11th house has been related to this very aquarian energy of you know dream it and you you know get over the disappointment effectively get over you know don't mull on it Mm. you know start just like releasing that energy out into where you want to be don't get dragged down by it that's it thanks it's it's the releasing of it so for you to become the person you want or have the life relationship you have to reflect on what serves you and what doesn't serve you what disappoints you what empowers you what doesn't And understand that those things need to be cut off if you want to be this new person. I know that sounds a bit harsh, but, you know, it could be the bad habits that really need to be cut off here and severed for you to step into that life. So thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back on again soon. Now you're feeling better, won't we, spiritual mama? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No more pratfalls, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're offering readings at the minute, yeah? Yeah, I'm just, at the moment, I'm just embroiled in the 2022 readings. Yeah, so, so I've only got a couple of spaces left for those, though, because they, they, they take, take me a couple of days each to do, so they're, yeah. they're, they're pretty lengthy. So, so I got yeah. them early. So if you haven't had one, I highly recommend one. I read mine all the time. So it's a, a yearly forecast based yeah, on... Yeah, it's a lengthy forecast. report. So it's, it's a you know. brilliant report. I love it. I got mine in early. I got mine in a couple of months early. I've made my reservation. Yeah, she, she got hers in the day before I fell down some stairs. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> highly recommend. so we'll put Nicola's link in the chat and you can get in touch with her to sort that out. Nice to see you all guys. And thank you so much. I'll see you. Take care out there, everybody, especially over the next couple of days. Yeah.